Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2. Like I said at the end of part 1 in this video I'm going to show you how to rip games to your hard drive in your PS2 using a PS2 game and also I'm going to show you how to rip a game to the hard drive using a PS2 ISO from one of your backup games using WinHip and for this portion of the video going to need a network adapter and then three and a half inch IDE hard drive. Most of the Maxtor hard drives are actually compatible with the PS2 and the two that I've used are both Maxtor, both work fine and they're also very cheap as well. I don't know if there's a limit on gigage. This particular one in the picture is I think it's um, yeah 80 gigabytes and the one that I'm going to be using when I install games using WinHip is a 40 gigabyte hard drive. Right now we'll move over to the PS2 and I'll show you how to rip a game to the hard drive with the PS2 game placed into, into the disk tray and then installed directly onto the hard drive. Before we head over to the PlayStation I'll just quickly show you how to install the hard drive using the network adapter. It's a straightforward process but there is one point that I really want to make and that's well you'll be seeing me point my finger there, that's the jumper and it needs to be placed in the as you can see the, the, the diagram in the master position or else the PlayStation won't recognize the hard drive but once you've done that everything will be perfect and you can see the network adapter Make sure you line everything up first and then push it on there gently. The last thing you want to be doing is forcing it and bending some of the pins. Place it back into the slot. Line up the connector to the PS2. Push it gently. Screw it in and easy as that. Right, so you see Half-Life and I'll be placing it into the disk tray but don't close it as obviously it'll just end up loading the game. I'll slowly make my way to the chair and sit my ass down. But after that I'll navigate my way to HD Loader and when you click on it you'll uh, hear the hard drive kick in and you'll see the access light blinking through the mesh in the PS2 as well. Because it's a brand new hard drive, well a newly formatted hard drive that's not in the PS2 format you'll be prompted to uh, format it in HD Loader. Once you hit continue it, it takes a matter of seconds. And once that's done uh, close up the, the disk tray and then hit right on the directional keypad go to install and then you'll be um, asked to name the game. This is a, it will show up once it's actually been ripped to the hard drive. Once you've finished naming it, go to end and then I'll begin the installation. I'm sorry about the glow, but as you can see there on the right hand side, it took three minutes. I did fast forward it, but um, it was only a CD, so it's um, below 700 megabytes. And once it's ripped, press OK and you'll see. Half-Life is now officially on your hard drive. And due to the fact it's the only game, it'll already be highlighted, so just press X. And one of the advantages of playing games off a hard drive is the load times are significantly reduced. Aside from that, everything plays absolutely perfect. There's no gameplay, I'll just basically show you that the, um, the main menu comes up. There you go. Now we'll move on to the next portion of the video. Right, I've now installed Half-Life onto the hard drive using the PS2. I'll now show you how to install this Red Faction ISO onto your hard drive using your laptop. 
or your PC. You saw briefly the um, setup as far as connecting it to the mains and then connecting it to your laptop. In order to do that, you'll need one of these. It cost me something like seven pound, maybe seven pound fifty, which is ten, twelve dollars, something like that. So they're really cheap, and you know they can use the IDE hard drives or the SATA converter, and um, yeah, they, they come in handy for um, all types of things. Right now, I'll open up WinHip that will also come in the download package. What you need to do is choose the .exe. If you're using Vista or Windows 7, I'm not too sure what the process is with Windows 8, but um, you right click and run as administrator. You have to do this or else it won't work. Pretty straightforward interface, but it does the job nicely. Right. I showed you how to format the hard drive using the PS2. You can use it with this program as well, but I've only ever done it the way that I've showed you and it, it works, so I stuck with what I know. And select the drive and it will always it will already say drive one and then PS2. Only choose that one of course. You don't want to be choosing your hard drive that's connected to your um, PC or your laptop. It could be disastrous. So choose that. I can't remember if you did that when the first time I did it, but uh, everything seems to be okay. There's the Half-Life, in this case CD, that we installed. And I'll show you how you do Red Faction, which is a DVD, so you've got both types there. You just add image, image file, add image, it'll go to the location that you, that you want to choose. Start. It'll, DVD will already be highlighted, and if it's a CD, CD should already be highlighted. There are various modes that you can change, but I've only ever chosen mode one, and every single game that I've tried has worked perfectly. So I always stick with mode one. Okay, and it starts, and the, the process is, is very rapid as well. I'll pause now and I'll come back when it's finished. And now that's finished. Click OK. What I will tell you is that if you do find that you're having any problems with a particular mod, you can highlight that game. You can edit the image settings and choose mod 1 or mod 2. I've not ever heard anyone that goes to mod 4, so I'm not, I don't know about that one. Also, you can extract your image, format your drive, you, you, you lots of things with this. Then also with the um, utilities, if you find that your drive has been fragmented, you can repair it in the utility section. Just click repair. Obviously, there's no problems with this one because it was uh, recently formatted, but um, th that's also another function of WinHip as well. The right, last thing I'll say is before I move over to the PlayStation and show you uh, Red Faction in action, make sure that when you're disconnecting your hard drive, go through the standard procedures you would do with a um, memory stick or any other thing that's connected via USB and eject it and it's safe to do so. so it saves you corrupting your data on your hard drive. And now we'll move over to the PlayStation 2. Right, this is the last time we'll be at the PS2 so I'll just prove to you that Red Faction is now officially on the hard drive. This is also a good example of um, the load times are improved.
haven't speeded it up at all. I just uh, pressed X, and as you'll see yourself, this is how quick it is. I quickly just go into training, just it brings up the um, load screen, and it gives you a good example of how quick it is. Right now that's done, I'll show you how to put RPL onto your list of uh, choices that you can see there by moving it from our memory stick onto our memory card. This was in our FMCB folder, The um, as you saw from the beginning it's in the download package but uh, in this case it's got a mass which is our memory, is our memory stick up on the RPL folder. Highlight RPN SR1 hit circle to copy and triangle to go back and then we want to go to MC0 go to the boot folder move down hit R1 and then circle to hit paste, it'll take a couple of seconds, it's only uh, 300 odd kilobytes and that's all PL now on my memory card to reboot at this point as well as you can see it's not on our list at the moment for this we've got to go down to Remit Boot Configurator. Go down to Configure OS D System, it's on screen display system options, circle, and go to the Configure Item and then hit the D pad to the right until you find an empty slot. In this case, it's number 7 for me. Hit Circle. And you'll name it. Let's call it OP Loader, but uh, OPL as an acronym stands for Open PS2 Loader. And this is how we show up on the list as well. I right, now choose the path. Circle. Now it's on your memory card. Highlight MC0. Back to the boot folder. Choose the RPN PS2 LD dot elf and hit return. Be return again and then save CNF. I'll save the configuration in this case again to MC1 MC0 sorry, which is the memory card slot one. Now reboot it and you'll see that it's now. You can now choose it from the list of options. And at this point I'll also open it up so I'll quickly show you how to configure RPL for the first time. It's straightforward but I'll, I'll tell you how to do it just in case. Right, you'll stay on settings, hit X and this is how it'll loop by default. So in this case we want to go to the hard drive you can have it as manual or auto I just choose, always choose manual and for the default menu I'll also choose the um, HDD yeah, games that's the one so every time you then open up OPL it'll, go, it'll load directly onto the, the list of games rather than the start menu Save the settings, hit circle, and then hit circle again, and it will switch through to the hard drive games menu. Press X, and as like on um, HD Loader, you'll just see the same list of games that were already on there. Right, 
Right, lastly, I'll show you how to uh, create a shortcut for RPL or any other choice for that matter, but in this case, I do RPL. To go back to the Freemont Boot Configurator, and then go to Configure E1 Launch Keys. There's the list of all the keys and what they correspond to. In this case, I choose Up as my shortcut. I already did it, but you go to Up or whichever button you want to choose, press Circle. And then you choose the path from your memory card. Go to the boot folder. And in this case, it's the .l for the RPL. And now it's the path highlighted. Return. Again, save the configuration to MC0. And now when I reboot, I'll be pushing up on the D-pad because that's the shortcut now for RPL, it'll just directly load into RPL rather than the Freemont boot main menu. There you go. Come straight up instead of the settings page, it goes directly into the menu. Just start the device and again it is um I like the games that are on there. Right, that concludes part two of almost everything you needed to know about Freemont Boot. Uh, as a disclaimer, every game that I've used as an example in both part one and part two, I do own. I don't condone piracy. The only reason I use Freemont Boot is so I can preserve my games and also preserve my laser, which in turn means that I'll uh, prolong the life of my PS2, which is, is important to me because I'm a a games collector for many systems but predominantly the PS2 so thanks for watching and if you made it to the end of both part 1 and part 2 well done and uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll have some more videos for you soon take care, bye